what are the best settings for this monitor? By best settings, I mean the settings which I adopted as the test settings in my review. So these satisfied my own preferences, my own unit, and also the color emitter targets which I go for, which includes a 2.2 gamma and 6,500K white point, or as close to that as possible. So the menu has a very basic look and it doesn't have an awful lot of functionality. So the first thing to consider would be the preset. That's found in color adjust. I'd recommend standard. All of the other ones, they make quite quirky adjustments. And they also gray lots of things out, so there's nothing else selectable on this part of the menu. And in the contrast slash brightness section, you can't even adjust the brightness. So it's very restrictive. And it's the same with the other settings except for standard. So just stick to standard unless you really need to use one of the other ones and you love how it looks. So with standard selected, more options available to you. I just said the brightness, I reduced that to 230, which got close to my usual 160 nit targets, but please adjust this according to your own preferences and lighting environment. Anything I'm not mentioning here, by the way, I left it default with the standard setting, so that includes the contrast left at 75. Response time. This is a little bit complicated. I like to have this set to one in general when I'm using VRR. So that's variable refresh rate. It means you're using adaptive sync, G-Sync compatible or AMD FreeSync. But as this table shows, the optimal setting, or what I consider to be the optimal setting, does depend on the situation. So if you've got 144 hertz or above selected on the monitor, or you're using VRR and your frame rate is roughly 144 frames a second or above, then I'd recommend using one or two if you can tolerate moderate overshoot, or consider that acceptable. Again, refer to the review for more analysis on this. If you're using VRR and you've got around 60 to 120 frames a second for your content, so the monitor is going to be running at 60 to 120 hertz under VRR, then I'd recommend leaving it at one, otherwise you're gonna get a lot of overshoot. And if you have a static refresh rate select on the monitor of between 60 and 120 hertz, then I'd recommend setting the setting to two or three if you find moderate overshoot acceptable. It's a little bit confusing. If you find this all a bit overwhelming, I do understand, and you just want one setting, just set and forget, and you do like to use VRR, just set it to one. There isn't any particular setting for VRR on the monitor. It's all handled automatically. You just have to enable it in the graphics driver or on your system. Also in color adjust, in addition to making sure it's using the standard preset mode, I set this to user color so I could access the red, green, and blue color channels. Made a few tweaks there. I set red to 100, green to 93, and blue to 99. That worked well on my unit to get close to my 6,500K target with a good neutral green channel. But be aware that individual units will vary. And some people have their own preferences either way. They don't necessarily want to target 6,500K. So feel free to make your own adjustments here. Otherwise, if you don't really want to play with this, you can just leave it at normal. The warm setting is an effective low blue light setting with quite a balanced look. It doesn't give a strong greenish yellow tint, unlike comfort view, which is another low blue light setting, but it doesn't reduce your green channel balance. So you might like to use either warm or comfort view, depending on your preferences in the evening or other times where you want a bit more of a relaxing viewing experience but Comfort View does give a yellowish green tint. They're both effective though as explored in the review. And that is all I changed. So brightness set to 30, response time is set to one for VRR, and color adjust using user color with a few adjustments there, red 100, green 93, and blue 99. The monitor doesn't offer any HDR support, so there's no need to go through that. I've got legom.nl, the website, and the black levels test open. I just want to talk a little bit about how you could enhance visibility in dark areas. So this is just using my test settings at the moment. You won't see exactly what you'd see by eye, by the way. I'm just going to show you a relative change you can make to the visibility of the dark shades, if you wish. So the way to do it on this monitor would be to select a different preset mode. And remember the restrictions I already went through. You can't even adjust the brightness and things like that. So this is really not ideal by any means. The FPS mode, that will give you a very uplifted look. Unfortunately, crushes your contrast because the black depth, the depth of pure black, is raised significantly. So your contrast is minimized. But it does at least give you enhanced visibility in dark areas and could give you a competitive edge. Makes various other adjustments to the image, which you may or may not like but that's really the only option on this monitor in terms of enhancing visibility in that way. You could change the gamma in NVIDIA control panel or something else instead. That might be preferable because you could stick to the standard setting and then do that. And if you wanted a really crushed look, you can use the RTS mode. That blends in the dark shade significantly. It just gives a strangely dark appearance overall. So the gamma is basically raised to very high levels. And back to standard. 